Deliver your vessel. All your vessels that you will use to declare your word. That their words, your word in their mouths will be like fire. And as they speak, your words will be like fire shut up in their bones that they will not be able to keep shut and they will declare as they have heard by the inspiration of your spirit that you will put your words in their mouth, oh God that they will begin to speak in tongues and every single person every single one of your children that you bring here will hear their own language will receive a specific word from you for your sons and your daughters will prophesy today in the name of Jesus and as you declare your word we will begin to launch out into the deep by faith we will begin to launch out into the deep we will begin to press by your spirit to uncharted territories yes. we launch out into the deep this morning we reject the religiosity of shallow waters we reject the religiosity of shallow waters and press into the deep we press into the deep we press into depths of you oh God we press into the mysteries of Jesus we press into your spirit and we break out fallow ground. We break up fallow ground in the name of Jesus. We break up fallow ground. The fallow grounds in our lives, we break them. The fallow grounds in our hearts, we break them. In the name of Jesus, we say there is no path, there is no area, there is no dimension of our hearts that you, Jesus, cannot and should not occupy. Come, oh Lord, we break up fallow ground that we might receive you, yes. that we might receive more yes. of you. We extend the courts of our habitation. We lengthen our courts. We say, come, feel us. Feel us, Lord. Feel us, Lord. Feel us by your word. Feel us with your presence. Feel us with your truth. Feel us with life. We launch out into the deep. We begin to handle the deep things of God. As we enter into the deep, the deepness of your presence. Our lives are transformed. In the name of Jesus, we receive life. The life of your presence. And we are transformed. We are transformed. We are transformed in the name of Jesus. We are transformed. Ah, for we look upon to you and our countenance is lightened. We are not ashamed. We are not dismayed. Our shame gives away. Gives way to grace. Our shame gives way to grace. Our shame gives way to favor. We are transformed by your presence, oh God. We receive your word. We receive your word. We lengthen at cords and the tents of our habitation. We prepare, oh God, for the bounty that is coming. Yes. For we know that the bounty is coming. Yes, Lord. We know, oh God, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. for the harvest is coming. The harvest is coming. We receive the harvest of souls. For you are God of the harvest. God of increase, God of expansion. We thank you, O oh God, for the harvest of souls. 
we thank you, our Father and our King. We bless you, O oh God, for that harvest, that boat sinking harvest. In our marriages, we bless you for a harvest of sweetness, a harvest of understanding, a harvest of communication. We thank you, Father and our King. We bless you. We exalt you. We thank you. Who is like unto you? You are the God of increase, the God of harvest. We bless you, O God. We thank you, O God, for a harvest of understanding, a harvest of your word. A harvest of prophecies for all your good words that you have spoken. They begin to come to pass. We harvest them. Even though we went out sowing in tears, sowing in agony, sowing in disappointment, we thank you for a boat sinking and shaking harvest. We bless you for the harvest. For you are God of the harvest. You are he who sends the former and the latter rain. We thank you. We exalt you. Who is there like unto you? We thank you. Even as you change us. That that which we give you, you have given us. We give back to you, O oh God. We give back to you, O oh God. That we might serve you in holiness and in truth. We give back to you, O oh God. Because even as you bless us, you will reveal yourself to yes. us in a different dimension. Amen. The blessings will not carry us away, but will bring us closer Amen. to you. Will give us a deeper revelation of your Amen. holiness. We give us a deeper revelation of your faithfulness. Yes. We give us a deeper revelation of your power, Amen. your majesty, your authority. Because you are king over the floods. You are king over the storm. You are king over every situation and circumstance and we give you praise we give you glory we shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph we exalt our King he reigns in majesty he reigns in power he reigns in authority our Lord is God our Lord is King he reigns he reigns our King reigns we declare hallelujah to our God to our King and to our Redeemer. And we continue in this atmosphere of praise as I welcome the Unity Hill Chapel Choir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the same atmosphere, let's just begin to call him names. Call on the names that you know him by. He is Alpha, he's Omega. His name is exalted in the heavens. His name is exalted on high. Because only Him is worthy. Only Him is worthy. We bless you, God, for who you are. We bless you, immortal, invisible. Hey, the only wise God. The ruler of all the ages. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, we worship you.
greatness of our King. And that's why we call Him Elohim. He's God. He's eternal. Yes, He is.
Chapel. For anyone who is happy to be here today, please just a round of applause. And for those that are online worshiping with us, just type something, a word of encouragement, a prayer, a greeting into the, into the chat. See, we should not forsake the fellowship of the brethren and the presence of God is here. His presence is available to break yokes. His presence is available to provide clarity. His presence is available to empower, to uplift. And that shall be our testimony here today in Jesus' name. My prayer as always is that whether you're worshipping here in the sanctuary or you're online, that your steps are ordered and that the purpose of God in your life will be fulfilled today in Jesus' name. Thank you. So welcome again to Unity Hill Chapel, to our hybrid service. God bless you for joining us and worshiping with us today. Um, if we have any teenagers in the auditorium, please make your way to the back of the auditorium. The teen hangout uh, starts now. Your teachers are waiting for you. It's a hybrid service, and so for teenagers who want to connect online, please do the same as well. Also, a reminder that the envelopes on the seats have a, a, a QR code, and for those who are online, that code has been posted. Please scan that code. It gives access to everything. The lyrics for the hymns, the announcements for the day, 
uh, as well as information about the church and how you can give. And God bless you as you do. We'll now continue with the service, and I'd like to invite for the Bible reading this morning, Mrs. Ibukun Oshomoji. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Tosi. Good morning, church. The Bible reading for today is taken from Micah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Micah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Hear now what the Lord says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, O you mountains, the Lord's complaint, and you strong foundation of the earth. For the Lord has a complaint against his people, and he will contend with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Testify against me. For I brought, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt, I redeemed you from the house of bondage, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Ho, oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, counseled, and what Balaam, the son of Boaz, answered him. From Hakesia grove to Gilga, that you may know the righteousness of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The last verse. He has shown you O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the first hymn. Thy hand, O oh God, has guided.
Amen. We'll now take the announcements for the week. Uh, this Tuesday, we will continue with our regular midweek Bible study. Another opportunity for iron to sharpen iron. Uh, not just to teach, but to learn from one another. This takes place Tuesday, the 23rd of April, from 7 to 8 p.m., and it will be online on Zoom. The scripture focus for this week is Proverbs chapter 30, verses 7 to 9, and the first book of Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. And the very interesting topic for this week is the juxtaposition of two prayers. Amen. As always, we will also have our Tuesday and Thursday online morning prayers. These take place on Zoom every morning, every Tuesday and Thursday morning from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. in the morning. If you don't already receive those notifications, um, please see the admin team at the back of the hall so that you can be added to that uh, list. And then this Friday, as we do every last Friday of the month, um, who can tell me what we have? Our in-person evening of prayer. Emphasis on in-person. Amen. And so this will take place at the, at number 13, Alexander Road in Ikoyi. That's the Clear Essence California Spa from 8 to 10 p.m. this Friday, in person, our evening of prayers. And it's a time for us to just come together, lift up our voices, lift up our hands, and um, you know, connect with God in a whole new way as one body. Next week, we have a special praise and worship service with our very own Unity Hill Chapel Choir. Invite your family, invite your friends, invite those around you. So there's a scripture that says that God dwells in the praises of his people. There's just something special when we're praising and worshiping God. And when he comes down, everything is possible. Amen. And so next Sunday, service starts 8.30 a.m. in the morning with prayers. And I look forward to seeing everyone here um, along with their guests. It is now time for our tithes and offerings. Um, there are different ways to give. You can, you know, um, use the offering envelopes on your seats, uh, whether that is for cash or a check. Uh, you can also give online. And for those that are online, the details of the banks will also be provided in the chat. And uh, if you would like to use the POS after the service, that is also available at the back of the hall. Um, I'll now give you about 30 seconds so that um, for those who would like to give now uh, tithes and offerings to do so. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for every opportunity as we take even today to give back to you a token of appreciation from all that you have given us. We acknowledge that all that we are, all that we have, it is by your grace. Father, we pray that what we give will be acceptable to you. It will rise up as sweet-smelling savour. Thank you, Father Lord God, for the resources that you are providing through your people. We pray for wisdom, Lord, to apply these to the furtherance of your kingdom and to your glory. And Lord, perchance there are any who are unable to give, Lord, I pray that you, Jehovah Jireh, the great provider, will make a way for them, Father, that all may have the opportunity to worship you in this way. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Okay. The amen didn't sound too loud, but I'm sure it will sound very loud when I, when, amen? Yeah. Okay.
Do we have any first timers in the house? If this is your first time worshiping here with us, uh, or first time in a long time, if you could just wave your hands. I see, yes, I see one person. Please wave your hands and keep them up so the ushers can put in your hands uh, a, a small envelope. We'd also like to invite you uh, to a small reception after the service, um, just outside the auditorium to my left. Uh, and God bless you as you do so. Uh, amen. I see some people are already eager to come out of their seats. Yes, this is also the time when we welcome each other to church. And so, if you can just stand up and greet a few people, say a word of encouragement, bless them with a smile. Someone told me that th that is the only reason they come to church for the fellowship of the brethren. Amen. God bless us all. We will now continue with the rest of the service with a special rendition by the Unity Hill Chapel Choir, followed by a sermon by our very own Pastor Bumi Adeoye. God bless you. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew 16 that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we're here to agree with that word. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you so much. God bless you. You know, last week when Pastor Tolu was uh, preaching, he said it was only the choir that he was thanking, and so you had to thank everybody else. But I just realized that he didn't thank a particular set of people. And so I want to thank all of you, actually, for coming to service. Let's clap for ourselves. Let's thank ourselves for coming to service. You know, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to be able to look here and be able to see people around. Uh, but I, I think in retrospect, it didn't thank you because some of you have not joined the workers group in the church. And I know that for some people, they will think that, you know, there are some things I would like to do, but you guys don't do them. Don't worry about that. Just go to the ushers or to the guys at the, at the back of service. And just tell them what you want to do, and we'll start to do them also. I just want to encourage everyone that it's such a blessing to be part of the work that is in the house. And so please, let's all join and try to do something here. God will help us in the name of Jesus. See, as I was, you know, preparing for the sermon today, um, I just looked around and this is just April. But if you think about the things that have happened this year, it looks like it's, you know, it's packed a lot of things into 2024. And, you know, it's not just in Nigeria. It's all over the world. You know, I was talking to someone the other day, and the person was like, oh, I'm supposed to travel and go to, I think she was going to Japan. And she was like, I'm not even sure if I can buy the ticket again. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? She's like, with, with this war between, uh, you know, Iran and Israel, you don't know when someone will decide to just throw one missile up there and, you know, you have to be careful around that. Uh, you know, even when we think about the business world here, uh, people have talked about the currency going to different dimensions, and I know that for a lot of us, even though it was tough, we started taking position. And all of a sudden, you've taken position, and then it looks like things have changed again. And you're like, what's happening here? And 
what happens when you have things that is happening? You know, I've never even talked about things that is happening in our own individual lives. There are just so many things that is happening. What that does is that there's this tendency where you want to just go to God and you are praying, oh God, this is what I desire of you. This is what I desire of you. I desire to protect my investment. I desire to keep my house. And the tendency is more towards us. Just me and the things that I want. But in the scriptural reading of today, God was saying that, you know, there's more. There's more. And in spite of everything around you, everything trying to take our mind off the things that really matter, there are things that God requires of us. And it's my prayer today that as we um, just go through the scripture, that the Lord will speak to us. In fact, let's pray together this morning. And just pray that the Lord will minister grace to us. He will minister life to us. Father, Lord, we just come before you this morning. And we are asking you, Lord, that it will please you, Lord, to speak to us, Heavenly Father, Lord. There are so many things that are uppermost in our minds. But, Lord, we know that when we come to you, you are the one that is Alpha and the Omega. You are the one that knows it all. When we do the things that matter to you, Lord, you will take care of everything that matters to us. And so, Lord, we pray for grace this morning that you will speak to us, Almighty God. Give us hearts that are receptive to you, my Lord and my God. Give us grace, Father Lord, to do the things that is required, uh, not just to be here as Father Lord, but to be doers of your word. For we've asked and prayed in Jesus' name. You know, as a background to uh, the scripture reading today, uh, Thank you so much, Mrs. Mayowa, for, you know, helping us to, to just read through the scripture. <laughs> That's it on purpose. <laughs> um, you know, um, Micah, like Isaiah, was used to, was used by God to keep the people of Israel from judgment during the time of King Ezekiah. And King Ezekiah was somewhat successful in the attempts to bring revival to the children of Israel. But it was mostly superficial. It was mostly, you know, it was, it was not robust. It wasn't completely. Uh, they were looking at the things that was outside. Everything looked wonderful, proper on the outside, but their hearts were far from God. And so... He surpassed their adherence to external things, to, um, to the things that people could see. And he addressed the core of the matter, their hearts. And that's what we're going to look at today. I know um, um, God asked them a pertinent question in Micah 6 verse 3. Micah 6 verse 3. It was as if God was bringing a case against Israel. He said, oh my people, what have I done to you? What have I done to you to make you tired of me? Answer me. Because it was a case of, you know, when you look through their past, God brought them out. He delivered them from captivity in Egypt um, using Moses, Aaron, and, and Miriam. And he, he told them about, you know, the instance of even when Balak went to go and bring Balaam and was going to place a curse on them. If you're in church last Sunday, Pastor Lee was talking about deliverance from causes. And he actually used um, this, um, this scripture when Balak was, went to go and bring Balaam to come and place a curse on, on Israel. And one of the parts I really liked was in Numbers 23 verse 8, where it says that, how can I curse those whom God has not cursed? How can I condemn those whom the Lord has not condemned? The reason why I found this pertinent was that, you know, the Israelites were doing their thing. They didn't even realize it that someone was there trying to place a curse on them. And imagine how things would have transformed for them where they were not knowing what they were doing and the curse came on them and something would have been different. I liken it to us these days. You know, the Lord saves us from so many things that we don't even know about. There are so many things that could have happened, that would have happened, but that we don't even know about, that God saves us from. And so, Micah was telling the Israelites, he says that, God, having brought you out, 
the least you can do is to respond to him as he desires, as an he expects. You could see that the um, children of Israel came up with all the kind of religious acts that they could do. They talked about the burnt offerings. They talked about the gift of the thousand rams or the penance of sin. It was as if they were saying that this is my own way of, you know, um, showing my appreciation to God. But God was saying that, no, that's not what I'm asking for. Those things are good, but that's not all. I really want your heart. And I believe that the challenge for Israel and for a lot of us is that we think that once we conduct and we do the religious acts, that's enough. You know, we can give a penance. We can just, you know, um, the, the semblance of I'm actually doing the things that God wants. But today, God is asking us that beyond the activities, beyond the external, he wants our hearts. There are things that he requires of us, and he wants us to be able to respond in that way. He wants us to stop the pattern of, you know, we get close, we get into things, and then when things look good for us, we forget because we're just more concerned around the external. I was reading about, you know, um, a little boy who was attending church. And he was going to one of these churches that had this glass, you know, these stained glasses where they had um, the, um, they had all these different apostles on them, demarcation of St. Matthew, um, St. John, and all that. And so they asked him at Sunday school. They said, who is a saint? And the boy gave a very interesting answer. He said, a saint is a person that the light shines through. Because in his mind, all he could think of was that those were the saints and light was shining through them. It sounds funny, but it's actually true. That's what God is expecting of each and every one of us. In Matthew 5, verse 16, Matthew verse, chapter 5, verse 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Lord's desire is not for an off and on relationship. It's for a life that is yielded, that is waiting to allow the light of God to shine through us. His desire is that even on this earth, our relationship with him will be such that our lives will reflect God on earth. And it's my prayer this morning that we'll, be, that we'll yield our lives to God, that God will use us, he will shine his light through us, and people will see the works of God through us and glorify God in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to go to the um, verse I'm going to focus on, because when Micah went through all this, in Micah 6 verse 8, he then almost like sums it up. He says that this is what God has shown you. O oh man, and what does the Lord require of you? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I'll repeat it. It's to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before, with your God. If you look at those three things, one of my first observations was that these were action, it was verbs, right? These are words that convey action, occurrence, or state of being. They were not passive in any way. In fact, this reminded me of the story of um, the rich young ruler in Luke 18, 18 to 23. And we can read that story at our time. But the summary of it was that this guy had come to Jesus. And he called him. He said, good teacher. He said, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus looked at him and told him. He said, well, well, no one is good, first of all. But that you know the commandments. Just do the commandments. Don't commit adultery. Do not murder, do not steal, don't bear false witness, 
honor your father and your mother. You know, we, 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 we know those things. And the guy looked up, you know, chest pumped, looked at Jesus and said, these things I've done since I was a youth. You know, almost, I, I think that he must have been trying to justify himself. And then God looked at him and said, you still lack one thing. Go and sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. And the guy left because he was dejected. He was like, how can these things be? This guy just makes it so tough. When I think about the three things that we're going to talk about, I almost feel that way. Because how do you do those things? Make them action. That it's not just a passive thing. But it's my prayer that as we open up our hearts today, that God will give us grace to be able to reflect his light and grace to be able to do the things that he wants. So I'm going to start off uh, for the first one, which is to do justly. God is a God of justice. In Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24, Jeremiah was talking about who God is. He says that, let not the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me, and I understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in these things. See, God's desire for us as his people is to do justly or to do justice. It's not merely for us to appreciate justice. It's not simply to agree that justice is good, but we are to bring justice. We are to do justice to the things around us. To do, it's an act. It's not something that we think about or something that we just talk about. It's something that we are to do. To do justly means we do what is morally right or fair. Our actions have to reflect our beliefs. God wants his people to reflect his character. He's a just God. And so we as his people must bring his nature to the communities around us. We look around our country and we say, oh, there's so much injustice around. But the truth is that the country is a reflection of all of us. It's our injustice and the things that we do that the country is showing. So the country just doesn't appear as unjust. It's because we are not bringing justice to bear. And for each of us, I want us to check ourselves today and say, how am I bringing justice to the things around me? In, to be just is to be fair in the things that we do. To be just is to be honest and truthful. It means that we treat everyone equally. We hold people to the same standard. And we do not apply different standards and fairness to one person over another. In um, Matt, um, you know, uh, when Jesus was talking about just bringing justice to the, to the things around, he says that we're supposed to seek out and support the broken we're supposed to liberate the oppressed and deliver the downtrodden. We are to act in a just and fair way towards others. In Matthew 25, 35 to 36, when Jesus was talking about those that come into the kingdom of God, he said, if I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, 
you visited me. God was saying, the things around us, it's us human beings that will bring justice around the things that will bring just things around, the, around us. This also means that we do what is morally right, no matter how unpopular it is. We're not going with the dictates of what people think or what seems all right. We're going with that which we believe is just. And each of, each of us have to check our lives and say, what ways am I perpetuating injustice? What ways are, am I contributing to the injustice that is around me? I, I read about a, about a butcher who, before he gave his life to Christ, he said that he used to put his hand a little on the scale so that he could read a bit higher. And for him, bringing justice was that once he gave his life to Christ, he says he quit using his thumb on the scale anymore. And now he even gives a little more to the people around us, to, to, to the people that come to come and buy from him, to people that are overcharged. My challenge to you and to me this morning is that there are many aspects of doing justly. What does this justice mean to you? I'll give you some examples. Something as simple as, you know, when people come to you, do you give people the benefit of the doubt? Or do you execute them behind their back when they come to you and talk about someone? Being just is also giving benefit of the doubt and not joining others to castigate and finish. You know, the Bible talks about out of the mouth of two or three, let everyone be established. Another way is that for the people that work for us, how are we treating them? Are we treating them as people that have been made in the image of Christ? It looks like in this part of the world, when you give someone money, it almost gives you the authority to almost treat the person like your doormat. Can we be a bit nicer to the people around us that work for us? Being just is also, can we be judicious in the use of company time and resources? We're being paid, but most of the time we're probably doing our own thing and doing other things. Being just is also, can we be just, can we be can we be judicious in the resources that God has given us? Are we just using it as we deem fit or unto God? I know that these are not simple things, but it's my prayer that God will help us, God will strengthen us to reflect the character of Christ, to be just in all the things that we do in the name of Jesus. The second one was, is about love, mercy. And this one is, is a tough one. Um, and I, I will talk a little about the nature of Christ. If you look at Hosea 6 verse 6, Hosea 6 verse 6 says that, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. In fact, Jesus used the same scripture in Matthew 9 when the Pharisees came to him and they were accusing him that he was eating with tax collectors and sinners. You know, in Matthew 9 verse 13, he said, oh, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And, you know, when I was thinking about this one about love, mercy, like I said, these are verbs, right? It's action. That means that your disposition has to be, my disposition has to be around showing mercy. And so, so I looked at one of Jesus' teaching on showing mercy. In Matthew 18, 25 to 35, we can read it later on. We saw Peter came to Jesus and he said, Oh, how many times should I forgive someone who has sinned against me? And he said, Seven times. And Jesus said, 
you know, no, not seven times, oh. 70 times seven. You know, it was almost impossible to, to think out. And he then gave an example of someone who was owing a master. A servant was owing a master. And if you look at NLT, he talked about it that he was owing his master millions of dollars. He was owing a lot of money. And so he came to his master. His master said, okay, you've not paid me. Um, he said, he ordered that his wife, his children, and everything he owned, that they should be, you know, given up so he could pay the debt. But the guy went to the master and laid before the master and begged him and said, have mercy on me. And the master decided to forgive him, you know, the enormous debt that he owed. However, on the other hand, someone else was now owing him a few thousands. And then he looked at the person and said, well, they should go carry his wife, his children, everything that he owned, and just put in prison until he paid his own debt back. And people then went back to the master and said, you know that guy that you forgave? Look at what he did. And Jesus used that to explain what mercy is. And I know that mercy, showing mercy is really tough. Because our expectations have not been met. We feel wronged, aggrieved, and possibly cheated. We feel like we need to take our own flesh back. But if we use the, you know, the illustration of Jesus, which I know is tough, we need to check ourselves and think about what are the things I can do? How can I show mercy to those that, des that are desirous of mercy from me? In fact, you know, um, tr true story. A, a friend of mine who had a mentee, who had helped this mentee to get into a job, and this guy now had his own job, and that friend of mine now needed help from the place that his mentee was now working. He needed a favor from that place. And the guy turned around. The guy refused to, to, to do what he expected. And my friend was like, but I gave this guy this job. I gave him this opportunity. I helped him. I showed him things to do. And it was a thing of unbelief where someone that you helped, someone that you did things for, and you could see him palpitating because it was just a sad thing. Because it was like, how, how do you take through this? But, you know, I, I believe that, and I, I know it's not a simple thing to do. I know it's not a hard, it's, I know it's very tough. But I believe that a lot of times, one of the challenges we have with forgiving or from being able to show mercy is that we are looking or expecting things from the place where we've actually sown or we've done our own things. I feel like if everything we do, we do it like unto the Lord, not expecting that we will get the reward from this place that we had sown, maybe it might be a little easier to be able to forgive and move on. Because God is the one who owes us anyway, the fact that you helped out somebody, the fact that you did a good to someone around you, it's not about that person. It's about God. And God can decide to bring up help in a way that you can't expect. So I want to encourage someone here today um, who just feels wronged, who feels like I can't show mercy I pray for grace today, that God will grant us grace to show mercy. I pray for someone today who feels wronged, who feels like I can't forgive what this person has done to me. I pray that the Lord will grant us grace today to be able to look and say, Lord, have mercy. Give me grace to forgive in the name of Jesus. Let's check ourselves this morning. What areas are we holding out? What ways are we saying, I can't forgive, I can't let go? 
that thing might be affecting us even physically or even emotionally, let's pray for grace today that God will grant us the help to be able to let go, no matter how difficult, in the mighty name of Jesus. And finally, it says that, walk humbly with your God. And this one sounds supposedly easy, but I think it's the one that we find hardest to, be, to do. See, God desires his people to walk humbly with him. Um, Psalms 25, 8 to 9, says that the Lord is good and does what is right. He shows the proper path to those who go astray. He leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his way. I think that this one, even though we claim to be humble, right, I think that this is the one that's actually most difficult for us as Christians, as people that have followed Christ a little. And that's what you see with the lives of the Pharisees and all that. It's easy to look at them and think of them in those days as being hard and just being full of pride. But if we look at ourselves, are we thinking that, you know, I know God, I know things that have happened, and looking down on people that have not found Christ yet? Are we so comfortable just making decisions based on the fact that I've seen God walk in the past? In James 4, 13 to 15, and I won't read the whole thing, but, you know, this one just challenges me every time. It talks about, you know, we just come up and say, today or tomorrow, I'm going to go to this place, I'm going to do X, I'm going to do Y, I'm going to do business, I'm going to do these things. And James was challenging us. He said, what do you know that your life will be tomorrow? It's a little here and a little there. We get comfortable with doing the things that we just go into it. I believe that um, for us, especially as Christians, we have to be able to check ourselves that are we just doing this based on our experience? Are we just doing it based on what happened before? Remember that God's word is what proceeds from God's mouth. God decides to walk in different ways. And when we think of humility, humility is not about self-deprecating. It's not about bowing our head down and being mellow and quiet and, you know, bowing for everyone. I think in simple terms, humility is full reliance on God. Just being able to completely trust. You don't know which way to go every moment. And that's why for us, we have to be even more and more even attentive to the things of the Spirit. Uh, in Psalm 37 verse 23, Psalm 37 verse 23, it says, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Um, not one part of it, every aspect of our life. We can say we have humility and not be constantly praying and seeking our God. Because the truth is that we don't know. Even things as simple as, should I go left or should I go right? Even that, we have to bring to God and say, what should I go? Where should I go? You know it all. That is how we bring our humility to bar. Is seeking God for everything. In Psalm 37, verse 5, it says, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Nothing is too big. Nothing is beyond God. It looks like as Christians, at times, we have compartments. How we think about, you know, this, our work with God. There are some things that we need to ask for God from. Like when things are becoming tough now, you start praying and looking at it. And then the issues around our business and the life, 
we just take it as something that our experience, the past, our connection, the things that we've done can pull us through. But we need to walk humbly with God. We need to come to a place where every decision we will have to bring to the place of what will you have me do? How should I move in this particular thing? And so my charge to us this evening, uh, this morning, I'm sorry, is that in what ways are we relying on the arm of flesh? In what ways are we trusting our experience and the connections and the things that have happened in the past? What areas do we feel that we have it figured out, that we have it covered, and we don't need God, even though we don't say it? My prayer to us this morning is that God will grant us grace that we'll be able to walk humbly before him. And so I'm going to bring you to a conclusion at this time. And, you know, I talked about the story of the, 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 um, the, the rich young man who walked away when he had come to Jesus and God told him that, oh, this you need to do extra. But I didn't end it because... Jesus spoke about it in Luke 18, verse 20, 27. It says that what is impossible for God, what is impossible for people, I'm sorry, is possible with God. So as we've spoken this morning, and you've looked at the different aspects and thinking that these things are too difficult, I can't do them. I want us to come before God this morning and just ask for grace. Only he can actually help us. I want us to check ourselves this morning. Let's come together and pray together. And say, Father Lord, my desire is to do justly. My desire is to love mercy. My desire, Lord God Almighty, is to walk humbly before you. So I come this morning and ask for grace, Father Lord. Because I want to be your light, Almighty God. I want you to reflect your light through me so that you'll be glorified through me, almighty God. I know that the arm of flesh will fail me. I know that at times I've gotten carried away with the things that I desire. But my prayer, Father Lord, is that you will help me, my Lord and my God. That, Lord, I will seek you more than ever, Heavenly Father, Lord. I pray, Father Lord, for grace to be able to forgive the things around me that I can't forgive. I pray, Father Lord, God Almighty, Lord, those things that seem like big hurts, Lord, you will help me. You will take it away from me in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for grace to be able to do justly upon the earth, Heavenly Father, Lord. In the place where I see people that they've been oppressed, I pray for grace, Father, Lord, that can liberate those that are oppressed, Heavenly Father, Lord. I pray for the land around me, Heavenly Father, Lord, that, Lord, I will bring your kingdom to bear, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, you've heard your children pray, Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, it's a walk. It's not something that we stop. So we pray for grace, even every time that we miss it. We pray for grace, Father, Lord, not to get discouraged. Let us be, Father, Lord, like those that set their hearts upon a pilgrimage that have decided to walk with you, Heavenly Father, Lord. That, Lord, it will please you, Lord, to shine your light through us, Father, Lord. That we, my Lord and my God, might reflect you in all the things that we do. This we've asked and prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Bumi. God bless you. Uh, And thank you for the prayers. I pray that God will answer those prayers concerning each and every one of us. This morning, just before I pray for the people who have their birthdays, I want everybody here to pray prayer. You know, we never have the opportunity when we come to church to pray. We come to listen, we come to worship, but then you have your needs then you have your needs and you've come to the sanctuary 
you've come to the temple, please can you take your prayers to God this morning? The Bible says that he's a rewarder of anyone who seeks him diligently. So coming here this morning is seeking God diligently. And praying this morning that as you are seeking him, that he will reward you. And the kind of reward we are praying for this morning is not a normal reward. Pray for something supernatural. Something that will make people look at you and say, this is what the Lord has done. Isn't it marvelous in our eyes? It was said in the Bible of somebody who was not well and sick. And Jesus healed him. And when the people saw him, they said, is this not he? Which means that he was unrecognizable because of the blessing. By the grace of God, somebody will ask concerning you, is this not she? Is this not he? Which means that God has blessed you beyond recognition. You open a shop amongst many other shops. People have looked down on you. Suddenly, the footfall to your shop is increasing. By the grace of God, that shall be the portion of somebody. You are seeking for a job. You've sent thousands of CVs. Amongst many others, yours will be picked. For those of you who have members of your family seeking for employment, I pray in the name of Jesus, somebody will say, is this not the CV? I pray for a supernatural blessing today on the children of God. Jesus said, glorify your name, O God. And God said, I have already glorified my name. But he said, I will glorify it again. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your children are praying this morning, please glorify yourself again. Even those who have had testimonies, we pray, O oh Lord, for more testimonies concerning them in the name of Jesus. Moses said to God, he said, show us your glory. God said, you will not see me, but you see my glory. Exodus 33, 19 talks about the glory of God. He says, my goodness will pass by you. That's the glory of God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, let your goodness pass by your children. He said, I'll be gracious to you. I'll have compassion upon you. I'll have mercy upon you. Let there be their portion, O oh Lord. Not because they deserve it, but for your sake, O oh Lord. Glorify your name in their health. Glorify your name in their relationships. Glorify your name in their businesses. Glorify your name in their senses. You have not given anybody the spirit of fear, but of power, of sound mind, and of love. This morning, I rebuke anxiety in the lives of people. Tomorrow will be good. Glorify your name in Unity Hill Chapel. Let it be known as a church that your glory passes by. You said to us, you are a shepherd. In our lives, let your kingdom be, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done.
glorifying your name, Unity Hill Chapel. Every member of Unity Hill Chapel represents Unity Hill Chapel. We thank you for testimonies. We thank you for your promise that you will glorify it again. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I would like to encourage everybody. We are praying 8 to 10 on Friday. It's once a month. Can you join us for these prayers? We are praying this particular month that everything that God has said concerning us, He will fulfill it. You know, He said about the children of Israel, He said everything written about them, He said it came to pass. It will come to pass for you in Jesus' name. The second thing we are praying about is that every word that has said against you in the past, every negative word, every curse, we are going to nullify them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord, for these hungry souls. May they never be ashamed. May the enemy never triumph over these ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's the problem with this church. Now I want to pray. I'm smelling the akara. They want to serve this. Affecting my spiritual. I should have told them to bring it in later. We have a lot of people we are praying for this week. But I just read their names and we just all pray together. It's a very long word. Ah. April is a blessed month. If you see all the people there, they are blessed people. If you marry anybody in April, aren't you blessed? <laughs> 21st of April, that's today. But oh, yeah, it's in Canada, right? Uh, well, in the chapel is everywhere. We pray for her here today. Can we clap for her, please? 22nd, I'm a pastor of Teens Church. 22nd. Unaya, 22nd. I don't think Shalom is here today, also 22nd. 23rd, Florence. I saw Florence somewhere this morning. Florence Ushi. No? Is Florence here? Ah, please don't hide in church. You pray for her too. That's Margaret's mom. Ah, we also have some of the Jackpot people. Afolabi Adebaju on the 23rd. And on the 21st, Jumoke Adekunle. Also on the 24th. Admin, thank you for reminding me. 25th of April, blessing Ushi, the same family. Then 26th, Loretta. Loretta. Although she too would have traveled, but please call her on that day. You are on WhatsApp, right? Okay. 27th. I think we'll most soon be back. Okay, she's in the UK now. 27th of April, most soon will be first of So, Father, let's just pray for them quickly. Father, Lord, we just thank you for these souls. These blessed souls. We brought their names to your temple. May I ask him this morning, glorify your name in their lives. Let these ones not only hear about your glory, let them see your glory. May your face shine upon them. May this year be a great year of testimonies for them. May your lines fall upon them in pleasant places. Concerning them, let us always hear joy. Let this year be a new year for new beginnings. Let they have peace, O oh God. Everything that they desire of you, O oh God, 
spoil them this year. Give them more than what they desire. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, with that, we have the closing hymn now. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. service. There will be the word, but the word will be short. We are just thanking God. Unity Hill Chapel Choir will be leading us next week. Please come early. Service actually starts early. I gather some people don't realize it starts at 8.30 in the times they come in. It's actually 8.30. Please. Benediction is taken from Joshua 21, 43 to 45. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it, and they settled there. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had solemnly promised their ancestors. None of their enemies could stand against them, for the Lord helped them conquer all their enemies. 45. Not a single one of all the good promises of the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he had spoken became true. Let us pray. May every promise of God upon your life be fulfilled. May God bless you 
and your family beyond your imagination. May God give you rest from every raging issue in your life. May God fortify you and your dwelling. May God fight all your battles for you. May God answer all your prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. And the children of God say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now. Amen. Go in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. May God be with you all. Amen. You've gone astray.